Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jay Johnson. We're here at the uh, St. John's Lutheran Church in Royal, Illinois. Uh, today is the 2nd of August. We're going to start a new month. And in preparation for that, we've uh, got our communion set all ready. Um, today we're going to be speaking about a passage that a lot of us know about. It's called, uh, it talks about the whole idea of j jars of clay. What that means is we as human beings are molded by the, by the maker, but inside of us he puts these treasures that await us. Uh, we're going to be talking about some changes, not changes uh, that necessarily are on the outside, but changes that are on the inside. Uh, and before we begin, I need to make this apology. This apology in our um, newsletter that went out just a few days ago, it, uh, it has listed uh, the death of Barbara uh, Duskin. Barbara actually didn't die. It was her sister, Marilyn, that passed away. So um, I regret that mistake. I want to make sure that everybody knew that. It was Marilyn Duskin that passed away on the 4th of July. We will be praying for her family in the prayers of the church. Having said that, we begin our service uh, as we start with the confession and forgiveness. If you would happen to have your Lutheran book of worship at your home, would you please turn to this page, page 56. And this is an opportunity for us to confess the sins that we have because in our brokenness, we then approach the throne. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At this time, if you want to hit the button, the pause button on this video, uh, please do so because these are the times, these are the times, whether we do it in corporate worship or in our, on our own time, hidden away, these are the times when the Holy Spirit, when God the Father himself, is very attentive to the achings and the longings of our heart. So let's just take a few seconds to do that. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now have a time of uh, scripture reading. Jackie, would you please uh, come and join me as we, as we go to the passages from 2 Corinthians and the book of Matthew. I want to read this part, part first. Mm -hmm. Oh, me. We are constantly reminded that as our faith grows, as our eyes are opened to the glory that God provides, he gives us the strength to live in the power that the Spirit readily provides. From 2 Corinthians. You show that you are Christ's letter delivered by us. You weren't written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. You weren't written on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. All of us are looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord, as if, he were, as if we were looking in a mirror. 
we are being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord who is spirit. The very next verse says, This is why we don't get discouraged given that we have received this ministry in the same way we have received God's mercy. Instead, we reject secrecy and shameful actions. We don't use deception and we don't tamper with God's word. Instead, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God by the public announcement of the truth. The God of this age has blinded the minds of those who don't have faith so that they couldn't see the light of the gospel that reveals Christ's glory. Christ is the image of God. God said that the light should shine out in the darkness. He is the same one who shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. Matthew chapter 10. As we talk about what it means that we share, this is what 19 says. Don't worry about how to speak or what you will say, because what you can say will be given to you at that moment. You aren't doing the talking, but the Spirit of my Father is doing the talking through you. Here ends the gospel. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jackie. This passage talks about jars of clay. Those jars of clay are fragile. They're easily broken. They are unique, uh, unique creations of the potter himself. And though that potter has created each one of us as that chosen vessel. We may not be the most elaborate, we may not be the most beautiful, but we are produced and created to do the purpose of God's will. On the front of the bulletin that uh, we'll be passing out tomorrow, there's an image of these jars. These jars are actually the jars that were created to hold the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls were incredibly valuable for us to have. I say that because they came to light 2, 000, over 2,000 years after they were left in those jars. Now, the really interesting thing about those particular jars that held the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were made specifically to hold the scrolls. They weren't simply shoved into some uh, cast-off jar that was picked up and these things were stuffed in them. These jars were made specifically to hold those documents, and the lids were created so they would have a nice tight fit. And for 2,000 years, those fragile jars, which could have been broken like that, by God's sovereignty, we're protected. And now we have the writings from those, we have those writings that were stuffed in those jars. I'd like to take a look at verse 18. 18 says this. Um, yes. It says, All of us are looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord as we were, as we were looking, as if we were looking in a mirror. We are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord who is spirit. Uh, this passage is incredibly important. Uh, actually, I was, I was discussing this passage with Ruth Hofferman some time ago. And by her witness and her understanding, it was very clear to me, this talks about, it says, from one degree of glory to the next. 
You know, God doesn't expect us to understand all these things immediately. When we were small children, we heard the story about this, this, this infant Jesus. We heard about his humility and his tenderness. And as time went by and we read about his becoming a young man, and he was that individual that went to the temple and spoke, we began to understand that we too were able to do that. And then when he became a teacher, he became even more bolder, and we began to witness that in the teachers that we have. And then as a leader, he likewise began to show his leadership to those around him, and they began to copy his behavior. And then he became a healer. And as a healer, he opened the eyes to those who could see uh, with a broader perspective. Then he became a spiritual champion for those around. And then he became a savior. And we as, as individuals learning, we were able to see those things gradually open up to us. And then eventually he became the risen Christ. And then ultimately, for all of us, he is the Son of God. You see, we grow little by little. Scripture tells us we grow um, increment by in increment, a bit at a time, a little here and a little there. It says in this passage that we are being transformed. In verse, uh, verse 18, it says we're being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. It says in that passage that Jackie read that we, that we are, have these treasures in jars of clay so that the, all, the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. No, it's not any power that we have. It's a power that's been displayed through us to the world so that the world might know. Um, I was just doing some reading about some of these individuals that are taking risks, high risks, and dangerous chances as they grow in their faith. And this is a quote from one of those leaders in China where tens of, actually millions of people are coming to faith. But it's against this huge opposition. And one of the leaders of the church there, his name is Li Lingqiang. This is what he says. This is very interesting in light of what we spoke about last week. This is what he says. This is what Li says. How wonderful it would be if, because of this suffering, we might be able to give off the sweet fragrance of the gospel. You know, the church is growing in China. And the authorities are trying to crush it out. But the resistance is so great. People aren't so intimidated by the leadership of the government. Their strength comes from the leadership that the Spirit of God has placed within their hearts. And likewise, that is what we are called to lean upon and to be drawn to. These people there are going through these amazing times because they have this Word of God that is etched on their hearts. This is, what the, this is the first part that Jackie read. You show that you are Christ's letter delivered by us. You weren't written with ink, but with the spirit of a living God. You weren't written on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? God uses us to be some instrument that our feeble words can actually transmit an eternal truth into the lives of people that we may know and quite likely even people we don't know. Um, I'd like to just share a couple of thoughts here before I finish. There's a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs. I won't get into it, but it's a huge collection of stories. And these stories are of witness. These individuals in this Book of Martyrs are about hundreds and hundreds, and the, and the book keeps growing. There are so many individuals in that book whose lives we, we sit back and we, we stare across, across time and we think, how bold that was. I'd like to share with an example with you of one that came to me when I was a relatively young man. It happened a long time ago in England. The Romans were in charge of the government then. They, uh, it was in those early days before uh, England became the, the powerful country that it is now. And the Romans were trying to stamp out Christianity. 
and uh, they were having some success, but they came across a group of 30 individuals that were fixed in, and firm in their faith in Christ. And they were told that they, would, they were going to be punished. And their punishment meant that they would have to die. So the chosen method by the, their captors, the, the Roman legion that was there, they were taken out into the middle of this lake and they were told that they would stand on that lake until, until they would die. And the lake was frozen over. It was bitter cold uh, to prevent any of those individuals from escaping. Uh, they put, they put uh, some soldiers around lest anybody try to escape. And as those soldiers stood there and they watched these, these Christians uh, freeze, one by one those soldiers left and their place was taken so they would have a contingent, of, a contingent of individuals that would keep them from fleeing. And those, those Christians, they stood out there on the ice and they began to sing. And they sang about their faith with incredible courage and one by one as the time went by, these Christians began to fall to the ice and they passed. They passed away. They died. As the numbers were getting fewer and fewer, one of those individuals who was on the ice, there were 30 of them, one of those individuals decided he would bolt and escape. And so the Romans had provided a hut along the side of this, along the side of this lake. And they said, if you want to turn your back on your faith in Christ, feel free to go over to this cabin and there's a warm fire, there's food, and there's warmth there. And so one of those individuals left that, that place out on the ice because they didn't want to die. They didn't want to freeze to death. And they bolted off the ice and that individual went into that cabin and the, the force of the heat, which was such a, such a huge shock to his body, that man passed. But the interesting thing was, there was another soldier that was standing there and he watched and he looked. And he was convicted. Why? Because as this passage says, you are Christ's letter delivered by us. You weren't written with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. You weren't written on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And one of those young soldiers, as he stood there, he saw what had happened. And he could still hear a number of those Christians out on the ice still singing. And so without hesitation, he took off his tunic and he laid it on the ground. And he took off his cloak and he laid it on the ground. And he decided he'd walk out there. And as he walked out across the ice, can you imagine what those, those Christians that were left were thinking? What is this? Why is this man coming? Now, history does not record what that man said when he got there. It does not record what any of those Christians on the, on the lake said. But I've got a pretty good idea. They probably said something like, Welcome, brother. And the Roman, the ex-Roman soldier, he probably walked out and said, I'm not sure what this is all about, but my time is short. Would you please tell me what's moving inside my heart that compels me to be with you? Because I want what you have. I don't have it there on the shore, but I will have it with you. And so the drama took place. Those few died on the ice. And undoubtedly, the last one to fall was that Roman soldier. And as he, looked, as he stood there and looked around at those fallen on the ice, he said, this is what I've chosen. Praise God. Now, here's my, here's my last request of you. What happened? Was it, was it important enough for us or for those individuals to have a strong image of who God was? Was it enough to learn a dialogue or a formula to repeat some phrase or catchphrase or sing a particular song? Was it enough to be pulled along by some herd mentality that we do this because others have done it? No. The text here says it is a transformation. We are being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to the next. And this is what it says in that last passage that we read. This is from Matthew chapter 10. 
you, you aren't going to do the talking, but the Spirit of my Father is doing the talking through you. Isn't that amazing? The Spirit of the Most High God come and inhabits our hearts and our lips and says those words much to even our own amazement. But you know why? Because God chooses us, these clay pots, these things that are fragile, and they will die. And the text tells us we will die. But with each death that we see, we see and we know that we will be in the resurrection. We will be that part of that body that is remade and reformed. God's blessing to you. Amen. We now have a, a song that uh, my wife would like to sing. Thank you, Jackie. Indeed, as we reflect on those words of just where our heart is as we come before our Father and even in our weakness to know that he wants to use us is a phenomenal thing. So let's um, just take this song reflectively, prayerfully, before we go into a time of prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Allelu, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Allelu, alleluia. Would you please join with me in your hearts as we share the Apostles' Creed? Jackie, I'll do the first and the third part. Okay. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have a few petitions here that we would uh, like to offer up to our Heavenly Father and to our Lord Jesus and to the Spirit. Creator Lord, you know all things well. They have come from your good hand. Your touch has given them life. Gracious Father, give us the desire to pray. May our lives rest in you. May your words live in us. May we be your note, your message, your letter for others. Allow the actions of our bodies, the use of our hands, and the gaze of our eyes to be taken off the things around us 
and focus on the things above and not on the things of earth. Not on, not on the things without, but rather on the things within. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Spirit who guides us, Allow our eyes to recognize your hand on all things, the small things, the simple things, and in the simple ways you call us to yourself. Draw us away from the ways of life that drain our love for you. Allow those who lead us to talk less of themselves and more about your touch upon our lives. We are wholly dependent upon you guiding us through the midst of confusion that blinds our world. Your comfort is for us. May our jars of clay reveal your treasures within. Lord, we ask too that those treasures within may be borne through the hands and the lives of those that are protecting us in these days. Mm. Lord, those who continue to, to be at risk in the care for us in our nation. Lord, we pray for your healing touch to be on those who are still yet sick and who are vulnerable. Protect our workers. Give wisdom to us and to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord of life, who is the destroyer of death, reveal your majesty in these times. Cause fear to flee. May your mantle safety be wrapped about us. May our thinking be clear and our actions worthy. May your truth be shown in the leadership of our church. Guide the North American Lutheran Church as we step into sessions next week. Inspire our Bishop Dan Selbo, shepherd deliberations so that they may provoke truth and trust among our members and to those whom we minister among. Give us boldness to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Light a fire amongst all believers in Jesus to spread your flame abroad. And Lord, we would ask very especially in those countries in which Islam is the main religion, mm. Lord, as they move into a time of celebration, of sacrifice this weekend. Lord, truly, may yet the light of you shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Fairest Lord Jesus, potentate of time and protector of your flock, we lift up our thanks to you and do so readily with each and every breath. Our eyes marvel at your provision for body and soul. Our intercession is on behalf of many that love you as you give them health, protection, comfort, and inner peace. Gracious Father, we do ask that you would be attending to the family of Marilyn Duskin Perry, who passed away just last month. Continue to be with the family of my colleague and friend, Karen Merkel, who has passed was just in the last few days. Please be with our brother Lester Frerix. Please be with uh, Norma Scherfe, Dick Duvall, uh, Lonnie Freeman. Continue to be with Leon Bloom, Lois Frerix, Herb Thompson. Please uh, be with uh, Dorothy Albers and Wilma Sloan. Please be with our colleague in, in the mission who himself is taking great risks to be where he's at, please be with our brother Jahangir as he himself is awaiting a surgery for his heart. Continue to be with Anna Yoder, bless Brian Henry, Harold Hovland, Darlene Saffenfield. Gracious Father, these are petitions on behalf of those in the nursing homes as well. Minister to them and may they always be reminded that their prayers, their lives, and their witness is an, is, an, is an amazing part of the witness that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Spirit of truth, in all cycles of life, you bear witness to us from birth to passing. At each step, you make us keenly aware 
of your overshadowing and constant care. The upcoming baptisms grant peace and insight to those who initiate a life of faith. For our confirmands, Talon Miller, Caleb Oakes, and Cole Pruitt, guide their steps in the days ahead, and may your abiding word be a light at future crossroads. For those couples who will soon join their lives together, be the bond that quickens their hearts and guides their words among family and those who will become family. For the many anniversaries and the children that we will welcome into our fellowship and into our world, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Eternal source of strength, the one who we call Almighty, we ask that you would cause all of us, when things seem to be tumbled down and confused, that we would remember the words of Genesis chapter 1, which spoke about how there was chaos, and when you spoke, order was fixed. We celebrate you. Be in our nations. So direct your spokespeople, your spokesmen and women, to gain the ear of officers, officials, great and small. May puzzles be solved, confusion be quieted, wranglings be soothed, tensions eased, and praises be raised because you deserve our obedience and our constant attention. With profound clarity, our Lord Jesus gave us a simple plan for addressing you as we ought, holy, royal, sovereign, provider, and majesty. And we honor you with these words. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. The only announcement that I have is that uh, we have yet some of our confirmants to be uh, confirmed in the coming days, so continue to keep them in your, in your prayers. I know that this weekend uh, was scheduled to be uh, royal days, however things are um, they're kind of shut down, but you know what? In God's providence and God's space, He has prepared many things for us. I'd like to finish with a, a benediction which comes from the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 11. This is what, how Paul addresses his friends in Corinth. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Be made complete. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of peace, of love and peace, shall be with you. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us this day. Um, we will be having communion here in the sanctuary. We're going to be doing this the first uh, Sunday of uh, the month. Uh, unfortunately, you can't be with us, but nonetheless, we do appreciate your prayers on the behalf of our entire community and congregation. Bye now. Thanks for coming. Bye.